Hello? All right, I'm in it, not quite yet. Uh, oh, here we go. Yay. Hi, people. <laughs> hello, hello. So good to see you guys. Hello. If you don't have your camera on, turn your camera on so we can see your lovely faces. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love being able to see you guys. Happy New Year. It's a new year. Yay. All right. right. Shall we get going? Are we ready to get going? All right. Well, I'm not going to talk long because we've got some great conversations ready to happen today. Um, thanks for joining us for Hear Me. I'm Sarah Jones. I'm CEO of PMD Alliance and love to be with you all. First, before we get started, because this is a real interactive kind of hour we're gonna spend together, um, I wanna make sure if you're new to Zoom, which I know most people are not new to Zoom anymore. In fact, people have been on Zoom for a long time now. But if you're new to Zoom, up in the right corner, you will see a little thing that says, it should say view, or it might say speaker or gallery. If you click that and you click gallery, you'll get to see all of our lovely faces like um, like the Brady Bunch or, you know, where you kind of see all of the boxes together. It's really fun because then we can see each other. Um, if you want speaker view, then you get to see the face of the person talking only. Also down in the bottom middle, there's a little chat button. You can um, post chat comments, questions, ask any questions that you want to ask. Um, if you have a question that you're thinking about and um, it's not something you necessarily want to ask directly. Um, you can also put a private question in there. Um, so thank you, Dr. Bixby. She just put Happy New Year, everyone. So um, you can put your questions in there. You can send them privately too, if it's kind of a private question and we can read that out loud. Um, okay, we're gonna get going. We are so fortunate to have three wonderful medical providers with us today. They are a treat and a treasure and I adore them. And I feel like every time I get to talk to them, I feel inspired even if I'm you know, in a cranky mood before I see them, I leave smiling. And so um, last year was tough and we can't pretend that it wasn't. Um, but we are in a new year, and I think this is such a great way to kick off the new year. So I'm excited to um, introduce to you um, Dr. Bixby, and she is, they're all in California. She is in Southern California, and Dr. Brillman, who's in Northern California, um, and Sherry Gould, um, who's also in Southern California. So this terrific trio, that's what we should just call this. Hear me with the terrific trio. <laughs> um, we're going to talk with you, with them today and, and want to hear your thoughts and comments and questions too, as we talk about what do we look at for this new year? What can be our new, um, our new plan for 2021 and how do we create hope? Um, all sorts of things. So I'm going to turn it over to you guys if you guys want to kind of say a few words and then we've, we've got some topics and I bet you guys do too. So I'll start if, that, if that's okay. Hi, um, nice to see all so many familiar faces. Hello everyone. Um, Happy New Year. Um, the reason why I believe we felt this was really important today um, in this month is that to springboard a new beginning and look back at life and give it the understanding that I believe it needs, but ultimately moving forward, learning from it and feeling like there's silver linings and in everything, including the fact that we had an opportunity to see our families a little bit more, kind of deep, go deep inside and kind of understand ourselves a little bit better and kind of move forward in a better light. And I'm hoping all of you feel that way as well. And so for this talk to be together with the people that I love more than life, the top five people and uh, everybody up on the bottom is ultimately trying to know that you are always heard. And that's why hear me is so important because we want to hear what you have to say and what perhaps on some of the things that you have decided to do moving forward in this year to springboard yourself. So I would love to hear some of your comments as well, but let's hear from the other two lovely ladies. Go ahead, Salima. 
Okay, so um, yes, yeah, so we have a lot to that we want to cover. Um, like Mindy said, it you know as we all know, it hasn't been um, the easiest of times. Uh, but we do want to look forward and um, think about what we hope to have, and all of us. And of course, this is going to be different for everybody. Um, but um, focus on hope and um, things to, to look forward to in the next few months and in the upcoming year. Mm -hmm. And just think about whether that's something big, whether that's small, um, but just sort of, um, you know, goal setting, things like that, and what we should be um, um, looking into and in new things and whether it's PD related, whatever it is. Um, and so we hope to delve into that top with you in the next hour. Yeah, and I would, you know, definitely have to say there's nowhere to go but up from here. Um, it's been the um, exact opposite of what we um, love to talk about with all of you in clinic or outside of clinic. And that is just those things that are so important for everybody, but especially people with Parkinson's. You know, what do we talk about? We talk about increased, you know, sociability and meeting with friends and, you know, intellectual stimulation and, and of course, exercising. And what's the best type of exercise is exercise with others because it's good for the brain, it's good for the body, it's incredibly important for brain health to exercise with others and be with others. And these are all the things that have been taken away from us in, in 2020. But not to be negative, to be nothing but positive because there's no place to go but up from here. So my, my wish is that each and every one of you that are, is on this call today uh, really wanted, this is a chance to be so interactive and not just have us, you know, talk to you guys. But I love, we all, all of us, all five of us would love to hear maybe something that you're, you're like thinking on of past COVID, uh, post vaccine that you're putting on your bucket list. And it's something maybe you just, you haven't done yet, but darn it, you're going to do it in 2021, because this is a year that we are going to appreciate things like we have never before. Because when things are taken away, and especially things we kind of take for granted, and now all of a sudden we have this new light in front of us, definitely there is a light at the end of this very dark, dark tunnel. And um, so I would, I would just love to hear from you know all of you guys about, or be thinking about it, be thinking about what is some goal. It doesn't matter if it's just small or if it's big, but it'd be fun to hear from all of you and, and really make this interactive. So happy. I love that. I love that so much. Um, Rebecca, you want to tell people how they can do like raising their hand also? Sure. So you can do it if you're on camera, if you want to like do a little wave of your hand, I, that's easy for me to see. <laughs> um, but if you're um, not on camera, but want to speak, um, if you open up your participants panel, there's a little blue button. It looks like a little hand. We've used it in some of our other programs. So if you've been like a game on or anything like that, feel free to raise your hand and that will let us know that you want to talk. Um, and then I will unmute you. And when I click to unmute you, you'll get a pop-up on your screen that should say the host is asking you to unmute. Go ahead and click unmute and then that will allow you to to participate because we definitely want to hear from you um we definitely want to make this interactive so and if you have any trouble feel free to put questions in the chat i'm happy to help help you figure that out and the participants panel is right next is pretty close to that chat down thing that in the, in the bottom section so you can play around with it um but let's get started on this and Actually, while we're doing this, I love that challenge that you brought up, Sherry. So you can actually unmute and share if you want, or you can also put in your in the chat either something you're grateful for. Like I think that's a great idea to practice gratitude because boy, it was that hard to tap into last year sometimes. So um, you know, you can put something you're grateful for in the chat. Um, it's infectious. If we see other people, we could go, oh, I'm grateful for that too, and I didn't even think of it. Or you can put your goal in the chat. And when you say it, that helps it become more real. So, um, you know, one thing I think that people are wondering about, and I'm wondering if you guys can talk about, is the vaccines. So we all know that 
you know, we're hopeful now that we at least have a couple of vaccines. Saw something this morning. Looks like there's another one that might be happening. Um, can you guys kind of share? We've gotten a lot of questions of, of the vaccine questions. So what do you know about that? Um, do you want me to start? Um, so I know there's two right now. Um, one of them is the newest, the first one that we got, which was from Pfizer, and it's two, two injections. Um, and then the next one is just one injection, which is not distributed at this point in this area. Um, a lot, there's, there's several tiers um, attached to who and when you get the vaccine. Again, we don't know because it, it keeps on changing for one. And two, your local area will give you better information than we could because we're all in California. Um, the second thing is, is that just so from personal experience, I did get the vaccine um, last Tuesday and it was, my arm was really painful <laughs> and I had a little bit of like flu-like symptoms for a couple days. But other than that, I tolerated it quite well. Um, many people in my office got it as well. Some of them didn't notice at all. Some of them actually felt a little bit more heaviness on the, on the arm, but other than that, nothing too extreme to actually, so you know what the side effects are for the one that I, I had. Um, I have another one scheduled on the 26th of this month. Um, I have to say that it's interesting because I was really happy to get the vaccine, but I also felt like I know I'm, I'm exposed a lot. I have, I see about 17 patients in office daily. I know that's a, a very, a little bit unusual for a lot of um, groups at this point. Most people are virtual most of the time, but again, for um, my particular clinic, I am seeing a lot of people um, in the office. And so there's a lot more exposure, but that said, I still feel like I wanted to give it to one of you because <laughs> that's just how I feel. And I feel like I want everybody to have it so that we're all on the same page. And so in time we all will have it, but that's my experience so far. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah. And I think, you know, so I, I have not had it. Um, and I was, um, so I, I don't, I have my own practice. And so I think it's different. Um, so even though I'm a doctor too, I just, I haven't had the opportunity or been given the opportunity yet to have it. That said, um, I know I will get it, so eventually, and that's okay. Um, but I think, you know, I think if we're just we're so we're so close, we're all going to get it eventually. And I think it's just happening in time. Um, I got a, a text this morning about one of my patients who um, is in us in a smaller. Um, uh, facility and he got a phone call from CVS saying, you know, um, can he have it? And then they, the, his wife called me to ask if that's okay. So it's happening, it's trickling in. And it's just like Mindy said, it's depends on the area. Um, unfortunately, you know, we didn't have like, I don't think that there was a sufficient rollout program, um, but but we're all going to get it. We're all going to get it in due time. Um, but we just need to be safe and cautious, and um, and I, you know, and I guess patient, and and it's okay. But we're we're so much closer than we were six months ago, and um, we just, you know, we're so much, you know, that much closer, and um, and we'll all get it in due time. So, um, yeah, Sherry. So yeah, no, I, I was also in that lucky group. I got mine last week as well and definitely a little sore arm. And um, our patients as well ask me every day, how are we going to find out about this? And, you know, as they determine, you know, just the different tiers and, you know, basically 75 and older than 65 and older. So it's coming up. So anyway, it is, you know, if we were talking at the same conversation last August, all of us would be saying, gosh, this is infinite. But I feel super comforted as I want you guys to that this this vaccine, in my personal and professional opinion, is very safe. Um, it, even though it did not take very long to actually get FDA approval, if you think about the billions of dollars they had to they had to put into this research to expedite the process, um, I've I've talked to actually even patients that have been in the area of immunization for their entire professional career and. Um, everything I've read and um, inquired about is really pointed to that this is a very safe vaccine. So, so it's good. So we're really on our way. But I'm just not to put you on the spot, Dave, but Dave Orlowski, since I know I, you must live in a different state now. But what's your goal for this year? I'm just curious. Do you want to unmute yourself? Dave, can you hear me? Do you know how to unmute? 
Hold on, I'm trying to grab him. <laughs> he does know how. So I think that this is probably set up. Sometimes we've got these set up. There we go. Thank you, Sherry, for putting me on the spot. I know. <laughs> he never minds I that. I about that. And I know you actually like being in the limelight. So I thought if there's anyone in this whole group of people, I could pick a bunch of people. <laughs> I just want to know if you're still doing your same, like multiple activities and all sorts of things that you were doing when we were seeing you at Scripps. So to, what's your goal for this year, for this brand new year of 2021? That's what we want to know. Um, get back to where we were last year. I'd be happy with. Um, you, you hit the nail on the head, Sherry, when you said uh, working out with other people is the key. That, that makes, that's, makes the, the whole difference. That's like a support group built in in itself. And um, I miss, I was doing the rock steady four or five days a week. And that was, um, I, I noticed a difference now, even though I've, I've been working out on my own, I noticed a difference that uh, because I, I tend to cut corners on my own, and um, it's, uh, it's just not the same. So, I mean, my goal, I'd be happy to get back to where we were last year. And that's a, it's an excellent point because, you know, it's really when we talk about exercise, right, it's the effort that you put in. It's not just going through the motions. It's actually getting that heart rate up and getting that excitement and those endorphins running and stuff like that and, and having that camaraderie with others that share your journey with you, you know, and just it cheering each other on and being there to support each other and be there for it's, it's, it can never be underestimated the power of that. And, you know, hopefully this will actually expand even more opportunities. So I know that Sarah can probably talk about this really, they're kind of inching towards how can we be together, but not really totally be together yet? And so the PMD Alliance has got some really cool drive, uh, drive-in um, educational events or social but events. Can you can you maybe talk about that a little bit, Sarah? Hang on, Sarah. Before you go there, I just wanted to say, Dave, um, um, when you say you cut corners and everything, you should be really proud of yourself, though, that you do it. I mean, that's awesome so awesome because it's really hard during this time to even muscle up the the energy and the desire to want to even do it by yourself so that's like taking triple the amount of energy and the desire and and so i applaud you i think it's awesome to do it on your own <laughs> and it's hard i know i i love exercise but i tell you it's really been hard so yeah. i i get it and i know it's easier to do with other people but Good for you, and I, I really applaud you. So. Thank you. <laughs> I <love that. laughs> Yay, I love that. And I, and I will answer your question, Sherry and Lauren. I thought I saw you were gonna say something. Um, yeah, I just agree with Dave. Dave and I happen to work out together. We did at Rocksteady before COVID. Um, I just think, I know for like the first five or six months, I did great working out on Zoom at home. And then you just kind of lose your motivation. It's really, I don't work out as hard. I still do it, but you got to be creative. We've been working out in the park where we can stay apart from each other. You're outdoors. It's safer. We're actually taking a little break right now because the numbers have gone up so high, but it helps so much to be around other people. It, it makes you work harder and the social, just the social socialization and just talking to your friends. I miss that so much. It's I can't wait to get back to that. It was easy for me working out in a park with Lauren and the girls because it was just me and 11 other women. <laughs> Dave is one of the girls. I'm an, I'm an honorary lady. <laughs> That's awesome. And I would love to hear what you what else other people have been doing to try to connect because Lauren, to your point, like to see other people, like Zoom has been tremendous. And thank goodness, even if we're tired of Zoom, because yeah. I definitely get sick of it too. Uh, you know, we spend a lot of time on it. And yet, I can't even imagine what this would have been like if we didn't have this. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's been pretty special. I saw Anissa's little gratitude piece in here. And it's like, I can't believe the number of people that we've met that we would have never met. You know, the people who now I feel like they're like my best friends. And I don't know if he's on right now, but, you know, Ken, you know, I've never met you and <laughs> you live like way far away. And we met because you joined Zoom and joined these. Like, this has been kind of cool that way. And um, yes, we are planning some in-person programs. 
um, but they're going to be safe because they are going to be drive-ins. Um, and so we're going to encourage people, bring your lawn chair. You can bring your own food and snacks if you want, but bring your lawn chair. Um, we'll have the speakers like we would for any of our wonderful in-person programs. Um, but you'll park, you know, every other parking space and um, make sure that you're separated from each other, but you can still have eye contact. Um, you know, in our team meetings, we're always saying, I just want to smell you. And that sounds really weird. <laughs> but you know what? Actually, can you guys talk a little bit about pheromones? I don't know how much you guys know about pheromones, but think of how much of a, of a loss we have right now. And yeah. those trigger, right? Doesn't that impact brain chemistry? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's a chemical makeup when you see somebody, when you feel somebody, when you smell somebody, when you have an opportunity to be close to somebody, even if it's um, six feet apart, it makes such a huge difference in regard to how your over chemical makeup happens, your serotonin, your norepinephrine, your dopamine is much more engaged just simply because humans being humans period. And so we have an opportunity, just like any other animal or mammal, whatever, they need that connection. And that's what we're looking for the best we can. This is helping tremendously for me. I mean, I couldn't live without people. Um, I am very, very, very lucky to have the opportunity to see some of you on a regular basis, but I understand that some of you haven't had a chance. You've isolated yourself in the right way in regard to just keeping yourself safe, but I can completely understand that are needing that so much that ultimately you're going to feel a burst of all these wonderful positive neurotransmitters when we finally get an opportunity to see each other, which is so, so soon. So yes, absolutely. Harems are important. <laughs> yeah. Trace, uh, I just saw your note, looking forward to road trips to see our beautiful national parks. Um, Trace, if you can, if you can figure out how to unmute, we'd love to hear what national park you're going to go to first. There you are. Oops, we got to unmute you. And there, okay. Uh, I've been to several of them. When I was younger, I actually worked at Yellowstone. And back in the day, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Back in the day, you could hold up a um, cardboard, uh, you know, like a cardboard and it said employee uh, going around. And I hitchhiked around Yellowstone back in the day. And, and it was safe then. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I've seen Yellowstone. I've seen Crater Lake. I want to see some of the East Coast, uh, and I also want to see a lot of the our uh, um, lighthouses. So, oh, I mean, lovely! I think yeah. the beauty of it is that we actually have an opportunity to still be able to, and again, depending on life and how much you have to go to the bathroom and you need to eat and all those other things, having short road trips throughout this time I think is extremely important because you're still safe because you're inside your car but you're right. seeing the world because when you see the inside of four walls over time it can kind of get a little bit hard on you and so right. having an opportunity just to go and look at that favorite tree that you had down the street or even further down the way to ultimately say okay the world is still happening and sometimes it's a little feels like a little weird at, the, at times but I can still feel like I'm out there seeing people across the street and knowing that we are in a place where we are all still together. Because when you're in a home too long, you kind of change the way your chemistry is inside your brain as well, on top of just the good feelings that you need to have. And so just getting in that car and have an opportunity to drive around, even down a couple miles and seeing the ocean or wherever you live, to have an opportunity to get out there, I think is important that we actually start thinking about that and seeing that that is a goal for yourself. I mean, even if it's just one day a week, you know, kind of thing and making yourself out there. What do you guys think? I ended up buying a kayak uh, last summer and <sighs> then I had some uh, some surgery, so I wasn't able to do too much after that. But that's, uh, that's top of the list too. Kayak and road trips. That's wonderful, wow. I love that. Judy, you had something you wanted to say. Uh, um, I wanted to feed off what Mindy was saying about the pheromones. Um, just an interesting anecdote. Several years ago, I was back in contact with a granddaughter that I hadn't seen for four or five years from, from about eight or nine to her teens. And when she saw me for the first time, she, we, we hugged, obviously, and she kept breathing, you know, sniffing on me. And I'm like, what are you doing? And she goes, I just missed your smell so much. <laughs> and I thought that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> now you know. <laughs> that, that, 
that's what it was. There was something there that she just, she just, I don't know. <laughs> Oh. I, I totally understand that. I smell the top of my, my daughter's head. She's now 10, but she still smells like when she first was, was born to me. I could smell it. Nobody else can, Maybe it's a different but it's the most incredible feeling in the world. So I can totally understand what your granddaughter was saying. <laughs> it's oxytocin, right? Is that, that's a, that's a neurochem, neurotransmitter or so is oxytocin that? Oxytocin is a hormone. And so hormone. That's what you, you release when you have happiness. Um, oxytocin and a couple other things that people a little bit of growth hormone sometimes into the neurotransmitters and so there's a lot of in the limbic system of the area where your emotional centers are it's really 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 prevalent once you have something that makes you happy it this the surge of happiness dopamine serotonin norepinephrine but oxytocin as well is something where you get to a place where you ultimately have this like almost like a a, a rush just like you would when you exercise or when you hug your 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 family member or your 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 patient. I'm a hug, I hug every single patient. I love my patients, but I can't do that right now. So we're like fist bump. Now I'm doing this. Because that's <laughs> something to say hello. But the idea is that if we have an opportunity to be able to see each other, I think it makes a huge difference. Even just this moment, I'm just so grateful for sure. Yeah. So like it and um so from a neurological perspective, then even if, I mean, it's lovely when you can give somebody a hug, but then even with, and I bet even now, yeah, the eye contact, huh? Even that can be enough yes. to spark some of those neurotransmitters. That's powerful. Can I give you a really good anecdote? It's really a weird one. So bear with me. And there's this story about this man that got locked in syndrome, which is a, a very, very severe neurological disease that didn't allow him to move anything but his eyes. And so, unfortunately, but he wrote a whole book blinking and he was, a, he was an editor of Elle magazine in, in, in France. And it's a, a story we all know as neurologists because it's, an, it's such an impactful story. And he talked about being able to see through his eyes and live through his eyes only. And when he had the eye contact and being able to express himself that way, it made his world alive, even if he couldn't move anything but his eyes. And so you can imagine what we can have with impact for what we can see and what we have is that our abilities, look at our abilities, look at all the millions and things that we have. And on top of that, that man was such an, a beautiful, beautiful story. It's called um, The Butterfly and the Diving Bell. It's an amazing book, a great, great story, just because it's a true story about this incredible man that blinked a, a story about what he was experiencing. It's like a, a, I don't know, a 60 or 70 page book. And then they wrote a book, they made a movie out of it. And so being grateful, oh my goodness, learning about that was a huge thing. It's like, we can handle this any day compared to what he had to go through. And so just always looking at those things and there's always silver linings, golden linings actually with everything we are able to do. I mute it, sorry. That's amazing. And I just knew that Rebecca was gonna find that link and put it in the chat. I just knew it. And, <laughs> she's, awesome. she's magic that way. <laughs> so um, that little link to that, that story sounds good. That's, I mean, so even that though, like reading stories like that, that's got to release some chemicals. I mean, Most definitely. Most definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. how are the, how are people doing with that? Like, how are you being creative with seeing other people in social, socially connecting while physically distancing? Anybody have any tips that you want to share, or any of you guys? Come on, Mike. Come on. I know you have something. <laughs> He's a wonderful singer. And maybe you can see his breath right now. Just kidding, Mike. <laughs> so Vincent, you're that right there if you wanted to unmute him. Mike, yeah, there he is. Okay, let's see, Mike. Let's figure out how to unmute you. Even if you just wanted to say hi. Hi, there you go. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, that's probably the thing I miss the most um, is singing and making music with, uh, with friends. Um, and colleagues, because I've spent a career doing it, and it's just been really, really tough uh, uh, not being able to get together with them, not being able to make music together. 
Um, mm -hmm. Even doing some of these virtual choir things, it's a completely different kind of process. And talking about getting together with people, I mean, just having that experience together, sharing that that experience of being creative together is just, it's, it's really special. And uh, also sharing with the audience because we haven't been able to perform with an audience, a live audience. This, and that's now, it'll be, we stopped in, um, the last performance was February. And, uh, and we're looking at probably not being able to get moving again until sometime in the fall of 2021, if we're lucky, if we're lucky, because it just really depends on the vaccine distribution because until our audiences can join us in, a, in, a, in a, an event venue, um, we're just pretty much out of luck. So, uh, well, so Mike, I, we yeah. might need to, call, it sounds like um, since you know Mindy, my thought is you're probably in, you know, Irvine, Orange County, San Diego, somewhere in Southern California. Is this true? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm in Southern California. I'm in Huntington Beach, so I have to stay very isolated. I turned into a hermit crap with all the goings on around here. Yeah. Well, once we have our drive-ins, drive-in events, maybe you can come play at that because everybody's going to be distanced. And in fact, I want to actually ask you guys that because I think this is one of the things that, I mean, let's face it, everybody's needed to be very diligent. And thank goodness, because we don't want anybody getting COVID. So people have been very diligent. So at the same time, I'm also profoundly aware at the health complications that happen because you are isolated. So there's a trade-off there. It's not as if there isn't a health complication that happens in isolation too. So like, what are your thoughts when you think about people doing something like, for example, our drive-ins or, um, you know, where, what are your thoughts about that kind of stuff where they can stay safe, but also still make some connection I think it's extremely important. I think it's, if it's done properly and they're distanced, um, I think it's absolutely important. I think, you know, certainly we want everyone to be safe and not to get the virus, of course. That's absolutely important and, and prime. Um, but I think, you know, there's something to be said about mental health as well. And having seeing faces and seeing people and seeing smiles well you can't really see them through masks but you can see the the, the eyes and the, the the crow's feet and stuff you just seeing other human beings is really very important for all of us and so while we want to be safe of course and sheltered and but we don't want to lose sight of the importance of being human and so doing something like having a drive-in, you know, get together where people are very much far apart, but yet together, I think is vitally important. And I think it would be very, very good. I, I'm, I think it's fabulous. I would be all for that. I'm all in. I'll be there. Yeah, be there. I would too if I didn't have to fly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come pick you up and I'll drive you. <laughs> Maybe we need to do one to, uh, up in Northern California too. I mean, that's that a nice awesome. road trip to do. <laughs> but yeah, I I think so. I think that that, um, it's scary. That has been one of my concerns though, is that because one of you talked about like, you can get really used to being home. Mm -hmm. So then we means we almost have to relearn how to venture back out um, and, <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry to cut you off, Sarah, but it's very oh. funny because as pra as practitioners who help people with Parkinson's, our goal has always been we want you to be the best you you can be, and we want you to have um, the best quality of life. And doing that is not making your social beings smaller and smaller and smaller. And while we all absolutely respect and and I even called my patients in the surge, like don't come in right now, let's just do video again. So obviously I'm very, very much of don't take chances, but we don't want your worlds to be the four walls. And so if you can find safe ways like this to try to start to get out, to mm -hmm. reverse this mentality of, I'm not going to be safe unless I'm in my four walls. Right. Really, should start to try to do that, even if it was like you know the driving, taking a small short drive in the car with your spouse or your loved one, just 
once a week or whatever the case may be. But it with the with the vaccine around, it's time to start to try to take these little baby steps out a little bit. Um, I agree. Kind of retraining you know, ourselves. You know, get a toe out there. Get there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, you know what I mean, kind of thing. And I think it's um, it. I think it's abs I absolutely agree, Salima. I think there's one of those things where um, people do get used to it because it's your your new normal and your brain chemistry does that too. It's like, oh, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this, this, and this. I'm gonna watch this show. I'm gonna sit down here and I'm gonna do that. And at the beginning, I remember very, very clearly is like, oh, I finally have a break. I don't have to go through all that. I could just be at home and have this moment. And then you get to a place where you've watched every single Netflix moment. <laughs> You've done everything you could possibly do that you wanted to do with that home improvement and you just need some outside moments so, so, so bad. And so the beauty of it is that I think this is a good way of actually starting that moment and getting to a place where, okay, we've all seen each other. And again, I think we talked about this yesterday when we were about to, to discuss this moment today with you is even considering one day, your one day that you look forward to in that week that becomes the day that you do it, the one thing that you want to get out and do, whether it be a drive down the road or, you know, going to Starbucks, you know, you know, <laughs> distance and get that smile from that lovely person saying, here's your cappuccino, you know, kind of thing. It sounds so funny, but it's just a little bit different of a day that you make a totally different world for yourself because you've seen so much lovely stimulus by just driving to Starbucks, getting your drink and saying, I went out today, you know, kind of thing. It's like your trophy. It sounds making, weird, but we all need it, you know? We yeah. All need it. And Judy, Judy, I see you waving. Judy from Georgetown. I just want to oh. mention that um, I've been on three drive-by events and uh, two of them, I have therapy dogs, two, two therapy dogs. And oh. <laughs> they, uh, they visit in the local hospital. And so they called all the volunteers of the hospital to do a drive-by to thank the frontline workers. And it worked beautifully. It was, uh, hold on. It was, uh, uh, we decorated the cars. We saw each other. We haven't seen each other in months. We waved, we honked, and the caregivers all waved and they were happy. And then uh, just recently, one of the uh, Parkinson's patients uh, has celebrated his 60th birthday. And he's, he was in charge, he is in charge of our videos for our Zoom meetings. And we had a surprise uh, drive by. And it was the same way, we decorated the cars, we, uh, you know, we didn't get anywhere near each other, but we waved and smiled and I, I would suggest organizing drive bys, you know? Yeah. What a fun idea. If you're part of a support group, like, wouldn't that be a fun thing to say, let's all meet in our cars at a, you know, whatever place and let's drive by. And what a cool idea to drive by some of these residential facilities where they, you want to talk about being like closed in, yeah. you yeah. know, where people can't be around, but what fun to honk and drive by and wave. I mean, that just, I think I would just tear up at, <laughs> it's, I, it, that's a beautiful, beautiful idea. Thank you for sharing that, Judy. John, I think you had something too. Oh, let me see if we can unmute you. Um, let's see. John. Here we go. There you are. Okay. Uh, this comes in the category of weird anecdotes that Mindy was mentioning and all. But I love to do yoga and I usually do it every morning at six. And I really, really missed it. And they had these, uh, it's core power and they had these on demand ones where you put them on the uh, Zoom and so forth. But I found I was gravitating toward a couple of particular classes and I couldn't figure out why because they weren't, the instructor wasn't particularly special or the, uh, the routine wasn't my favorite poses and so forth. But then I figured it out and this is really weird. I'm a little embarrassed to say it, but there were other <laughs> dons in the class. And they would call out and say, way to go, John, or good posture or whatever. And I thought it was me. You know, I felt like she was talking to me. <laughs> that, that was, it, it's how desperate you get for this personal interaction and, and contact with people. Just even though it wasn't me and I knew it. It just felt good to some for somebody to say, you know, hey, uh, you know, good job, John. And I thing. see you. And I see you. Yeah, yeah, you're there. Yeah, exactly. Even though they, you know, so I've also gone to using, um, 
having Zoom classes with individual instructors, you know, you pay them to do it. Mm -hmm. It makes a big difference to keep your interest up in that stuff. But oh, yeah. uh, it is rough not to have that interaction because I'm a pretty social guy, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, what a great, but that's a great thing to share, John. I think of like, I've been trying to do that more in the, in the like when I'm in the grocery store or driving through Starbucks, which is one of my, one to make sure I make eye contact with whoever it is. Um, and then also like almost everybody has a name tag on, but to your point, people don't say each other's names very often. And in this time period, that does go a really long way. Like if you're like the person who rang you up at the grocery store and being like, Hey, thanks Sue. Like, like humans, yeah. um, boy, have we lost touch with that. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And, I, and I thank them because I'm so happy they're there because I know that yeah. sometimes it's hard to get up in the morning and go and do what you're going to do and, 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 and take care of people no matter what it is. Right. Um, and you're going there and you're, you're, I'm grateful. I'm so grateful to be yeah. able to, for one, to see a person, but two, for them to be there helping people, you know, feel like they're still in the world doing things. Mm -hmm. So I think that that is a beautiful thing to say and do. John, that's great. Judy, yeah. did I see you? Yeah, I thought I saw you waving again. Um, yeah, just to, uh, I keep feeding off other people's stories, but. That's what we're uh, supposed to good. do. <laughs> yeah, the drive-by story. We did that several months ago for a, a friend of ours, a lady, a member of our church who was turning 80. And she had planned a big party, but then couldn't have it. So we got a whole bunch of us from the church together to do a drive-by down past her house and there were so many of our cars that the neighbors all came out <laughs> oh. what the fuss was right. and we ended up with the whole neighborhood was out in front of their houses waving and, and so you know it, it, it wasn't just her we ended up entertaining you know, all <laughs> other all these other people so and she'll never forget it yeah, yeah. Right. and that was early on in the virus when I, you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't quite as many people doing it as are now, but yeah, right. That, that was kind of fun. Yeah. Oh, I love it, Roger. I see you got your hand up. Oh, you're muted. See, a day doesn't go by where I don't use that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a really fun thing. We're gonna have an oh no, we're not gonna we're gonna have a celebration and pop some pop some champagne when you don't have to say that phrase every day. Okay. <laughs> Where where'd you go, Roger? I lost you. Where'd you go? Am I, there you are. Am I can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 Here you are, okay. Roger. I used to attend Northwest Indiana Parkinson's meetings. They were an action chapter, but it is a two hour drive for me. So I'm trying to be more active in the three other local groups, but New Year's Eve, they said we start our party at 11.30 a.m. <laughs> and they had a catered lunch and we danced all afternoon oh. and played cornhole golf and did more dancing and I, it's up towards Chicago so I gained an hour going but then we went to a 24 hour restaurant and I forgot all about gaining an hour. <laughs> and I lost an hour coming home. And I got home at 3 a.m. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Okay, that's a long day. Yeah. So I sent them an email and told them, well, I hadn't been there for two, over two years. But when I walked in, it was just like I was there yesterday. Aww. Friends again, I shot them an email saying, thank you for making me a teenager the second time. <laughs> <laughs> That's but fantastic. They took video clips dancing 
and with each one of our friends. And I got to tell them about PMD and they are all excited about that. So be on the lookout for Northwest Indiana. Fantastic, thank you. You guys are key to sharing the word for sure. <laughs> And I, you know, I just want to mention on the tales of that, and, and it's just a uh, love to hear these stories about drive-bys and starting little get-togethers safely and things like that. And it, just on the tales, what Mindy and Selima were saying is that, you know, we can get in this mindset right after so many months of sheltering at home, that it becomes, it becomes that is our new normal. And I just want to bring up the fact that anxiety is a very real part of many people with Parkinson's. And so of course, if, you're, if your everyday routine is now like the set thing, the same thing, guess what? It decreases in some ways, maybe your anxiety because there's nothing really different. But I just wanna say, just acknowledge that, you know, as you push out and start doing more things and kind of gather some of these ideas about you know, volunteering or um, participating in anything and you go back outside of your comfort zone where there may be a little more anxiety that might come back up. It's okay, it's gonna be okay. Just push through it because that needs to come back to be our, all of our, back to our new normal again. So just be aware that that may happen and don't let it um, stop you for, for a second. That's a great tip, actually, right? And to just know that could happen as opposed to sending that you backwards from that. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great tip. Toe, toe, um, toe, slowly toe, toe, and then the whole foot, and then the whole yeah. thing, and then we're going to go forward. <laughs> you know, hey, and Emma, you know oh, this sorry. reminds me, too, of and it's something I know we have had conversations with, the three of you. I've had lots of conversations with you guys about this, that that people tend to think about, you know, that we tend to think about things like medication and, and not that, we, I mean, medication is important. And Parkinson's, people with Parkinson's and people without Parkinson's need medication. However, we tend to minimize the importance of the many things we've talked about today. And those somehow become, those are like the nice things to have, but not the required things to have. And I'm here, and I always, think about, boy, I wish we could prescribe these things, like prescribe it because it, it is so important, isn't it? I mean, oh, yeah. are you guys seeing that kind of the health challenges because we haven't really taken seriously as much as we need to the importance of the socialization? Oh, when I used to have like a prescription pad, I used to write all kinds of things like, <laughs> you know, you, you must run three times a week because of the fact that you have this. And then you go, okay, here you go. And I found a way actually that, which is really cool, just so you know, that if you have a, a physician or a provider writes it, you can have a tax write-off. So if you want that massage after this is all done and say your, your health practitioner was able to write that down, it's a tax write-off. So all these beautiful things you can do. And I love prescriptions if we can make it happen for things that are quality of life, improving your life things as much as possible. And so that therapist that you love that may not take insurance or that, that exercise therapist that's gonna get you moving and motivated or that massage therapist that keeps you feeling good and not so stiff. All those things, if, you write a, if we write one for you or whoever your, your doctor or your provider is, you have an opportunity. And so that's even a win-win. Yeah, so Roger. Roger. Gotta unmute him. Can you unmute him? Oh, there you go. Is that called a teleprescription? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. <laughs> That's fantastic. Hey, by the way, Dave Orlowski put in the note, um, if you'd like to attend a Zoom question and answer session with the physical therapist, Claire McLean tonight at 4 p.m., um, he put the website to go at for details. And I can tell you, we have, we have I know you guys know Claire, mm -hmm. and we have had Claire on, and she's actually done some stuff at some of our workshops. She's phenomenal. Amazing. 
amazing. My other arm, like if I had three arms, that would be her. She's yeah. incredible, motivating, allows you to understand where you are and where you can go. It's incredible. So please consider going because if, if, you if you've will never, If you've never seen Claire speak, you're missing a treat, believe me. I agree, Dave. Absolutely. It's everything. It's it's really, truly something where you can get another aspect of your, your Parkinson's getting better. I mean, and ultimately understanding a little bit more why your body is moving the way it is and help yourself to a place where you can actually get so much better. Leaps and bounds. I mean, my patients, I know you saw Claire, didn't you? Because I can see the difference in them. So wow, after seeing you. She's great. Really hey, good. what do you guys think about care partners? I know I can see some people on here that I know are care partners. And, you know, so when I think about anxiety and I think about strain and depression and also feeling like I think about the world having closed in for care partners, sometimes care partners, you know, it was when the person would go for exercise that they would then have a, an hour for themselves, yeah. right? Absolutely. And then that's taken away as well. And so it's super important you know, that they, that they're taken care of, that they have their time as well. And um, again, the socialization, super, very, very important, the baby steps out. And, um, you know, it's not just um, the, the socialization of being outward, but also it's, it's taxing to be with your partner 24 seven, um, with or without Parkinson's, uh, this pandemic has challenged us all, um, I think, along those lines. And so um, as much as we love our partners, it's not that easy. So, um, you know, definitely having a few minutes to oneself, I think, is very, very important for, um, for all of us. So saying, uh, you know, I'm going to go take 10 minutes and maybe take a little walk or, you know, if it's safe um, to do so or um, really important. So, yeah. But care partners really definitely have, um, they don't have that, that outlet that they probably used to have before. So. Maybe, um, I, and I know we're getting close, but we're not quite there yet. So we still have an, enough time for every single person here to put in the chat one thing they can do in the next week for, for connection. And I mean, so like you guys have given some great ideas. Take a car ride. It doesn't mean that you have to even get out of your car. Um, go through a drive-through. Um, we've, you know, we've had many, many ideas. I'd love to see some ideas of one commitment we could each make over the next maybe week or so. Um, oh, out for a walk with a friend. I love that. Nice. Mm -hmm. Fresh air too. Yeah, fresh Vitamin air. Vitamin D. Sunlight. Exactly. Exactly. Vitamin D is a pretty important, um, pretty important uh, vitamin that we often miss, don't we? And people think just because they live in California that and they're in the sun that they get it and they have enough, but that's not actually. The case. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's something we always pick. I actually, when I see not just Parkinson's patients, I also have people that have short-term memory and sometimes Parkinson's patients have short-term memory. And we do a, a panel of evaluation of vitamins and evaluation to see if you're, you're low on something. And interesting enough, vitamin D does so much for your mood as well and cognition and ability to actually just feel like your bones are nice and healthy. And so all those things are important. And so I tend to make sure that's part of your panel if you are having any things that you tell me that, okay, let's check this out and see, because actually they say that almost like in Southern California, oh. it's about 30% higher of vitamin D deficiency. Don't know why, I mean, we get a lot of sun, but for some reason it's not working for us. Maybe we slather a lot of sunscreen on, I don't know. But the idea is that it is important to check it because it's mm -hmm. so easy to supplement that, you know, so. For sure. Salima, did you just see that one um, I comment? <laughs> so cute. <laughs> I love that. Connect with clients by doing a happy dance with patio door and six feet between us. I love that so much. <laughs> Prepare me that. together. So cute. <laughs> Somebody said, read a book with my husband. That's great. You know, listening to a book on tape together is kind of nice too. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Sit outside and like listen to a book on tape. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Call a friend I haven't seen. That's a great idea. Mm hmm. These are great. Yes, um, start planning future travel in earnest. One of my patients, they already booked a trip in September um, or October to Ireland and Scotland and and they can cancel it. She figures we'll just cancel it if we have to, but at least that's something that they're going to look forward to. I, yeah, yeah. I look forward to I had a ton of plane tickets that I keep on canceling, but hey, I mean, when Southwest Airlines has a $29 flight from Orange County to Oakland to come see you, Salima, um, it's still worth it. I mean, it's until the end of this Thursday, so you know, it's $29 oh. each way. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Trace, did you have your hand up? I was just going to say, I'm, I'm up in Oregon and I have a client's, Neil and Wheels clients, and we do a lot of um, virtual Zooms right now. And I'm going to do, I'm so excited about this. We're going to do 2021 glasses and we're going to cheers to everybody with their favorite uh, spirits on um, third Wednesday for the caregivers and they're so oh. looking forward to this so awesome. you were speaking earlier about how you know take time for the caregivers as well so yeah. Yeah. really that's great that's a such a great idea awesome. yeah awesome. that will be fun you might need to take a picture of that so that we can uh, see that one <laughs> that will be a fun picture so before we close down here, I'm curious if you guys have any, um, if you each have just one word of wisdom that you would, that you tell your patients or that you want to like leave people with as they think about kind of reframing this year and finding, touching hope again and touching a positivity again. Well, I, I, I just wanted to make a, just a, a little bit of a plug. Uh, um, some of you may or may not know, but I do these great climbs around the world with uh, my patients with Parkinson's and their loved ones. And of course, our climb in Italy was canceled for 2020, but I just rebooked it for September of 2021. And the responses from this group of 30 was like, it, it was just like, again, look forward to something, put something on your calendar because this is going to end and we're going to go back to our lives. Let's make it better than it was before. Let's make it healthier. Let's make it more active than it was in 2019. I mean, always think forward. You know, we don't have to even strive for the same. Let's strive for better. Let's strive for a bigger mountain or a longer walk around the block or getting involved in yoga if you've never done that or Pilates or you know, getting back to that rock steady or creating your own. So yeah, I, I think that there's tons to look forward to and it's always super um, positive and energetic to do these talks with you guys and see everybody on on Zoom. And, um, and you know, this is probably going to continue even after COVID because we look at how we can connect. We could never all fly into Arizona to kind of, or we can at some point, but uh, <laughs> economically it would be a little bit of a challenge, but we can certainly share ideas and share friendship um, on this platform. And I, I'm very appreciative of that. So thank you, Sarah, for, and Rebecca, for giving us this opportunity. It's really special. Oh, thank you. Mindy Salima, what are your so final as I walk into um, my clinic on January 2nd, I really wanted to think about that because our third, whatever day we started on Monday. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I was ready for this year. And I wanted to get a, a, a chance to, I mean, I have, I've, I've been very stoked and lucky that I get to see people on a regular basis um, in, in the clinic. But the idea is that a lot of people come in and they're hard on themselves because of whatever they didn't do the year before, just simply because they simply couldn't. And I always say, give yourself grace. Mm -hmm. That is where you were then. And now we're 2021 and think of it as a brand new beginning to launch from. All these things are happening because everybody's like, doc, what's, what's new in the, the land of Parkinson's? What can we do and look forward to? Well, that's the beauty of it. Everything's changing. Now that we have the vaccines, we now can start looking at clinical trials and changing the things that we were just on the brink of learning about. And so that's where we are right now. We're doing, uh, we wanna do a whole bunch of research at Scripps and all the other places that we ultimately would like to con grab all this stuff and let you know about. And that's what is important. That's what I hope that we can talk about next time is, hey, you know, what are the things that are out there that we can do moving forward 
while we're walking through this together. And so I'm always right there. I mean, you are on my arm, even if it's not physically, and we're walking through this life together. And so if you can give yourself a little grace and know that that was yesterday and this is today, that's what I think is most important. That's beautiful. That's awesome. Salima? So I would just like to say that um, we really are almost there. And um, when, although, you know, there's always going to be times where we feel a little bit down and that is normal. But if we just look deep down inside ourselves and we just pull out a little bit more strength for those times, we can get through this. And knowing that we may not have our best friends right next to us or our children or grandchildren right next to us. We will have them soon and they're with us, um, even if it's distally for just a little bit longer and um, just having faith and hope and um, and it's it's within our grasp, so. Oh, yes, Roger's giving you the thumbs up and Rebecca put in, thank you, you guys. Um, thank you so much. And I, we, Rebecca put in the chat, um, in case you don't know and you don't have it yet, you definitely want to download our app, our PD and me app, which we're really grateful um, for building with Synovian's help. Um, this app is um, phenomenal. It will, you put in your zip code and it's gonna tell you everything that's happening around you. It's gonna tell you um, exercise, it's gonna tell you support groups, it's gonna tell you virtual and non-virtual, it's gonna tell you organizations. Um, it, you can create your own calendar so you can do those kind of things. Um, it'll also link you to some of these uh, resources that are on the website. So take a peek at the uh, PDME app and, um, and don't forget to join us next time. I can't thank you guys enough. It's lovely. It was wonderful hearing you in the Hear Me um, live, live stream today. Um, Salima, Mindy, and Sherry, thank you so much for spending your time and, and giving your time to us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Everybody so wave much. thanks. Thank you all. Happy New Year. So much. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. See you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.